The exact number of people in Wuhan who died from the CCP virus remains a mystery to date. In order to prevent the families of the deceased from holding the CCP accountable, the CCP not only took full control of funeral arrangements, but is also closely monitoring the families by closing down their WeChat groups and by reprimanding and threatening the group organizers. The police even warned that if more than five people congregate to defend their rights, they will be arrested. Tan Jun, a public servant from Yi Chang Hubei, was the first person in China to publicly sue the CCP over the pandemic, as reported by the New York Times on May 6. A copy of his indictment, circulating online, accuses the government of concealing the true nature of the virus, causing citizens to overlook the dangers of the virus, letting their guards down, and neglecting to protect themselves. He said the virus had already started to circulate in early January, while Hubei officials were still hosting a large-scale banquet for about 40,000 families in Wuhan. He called on the government to apologize to its people. However, an apology is far from enough for the families of the deceased. Zhang Hai, a Wuhan citizen, seeks compensation for his father's death and wants government officials involved to receive harsher punishments. Zhang Hai's 76-year-old father died on February 1st at a Wuhan hospital due to complications from the CCP virus. Angry, he signed up for a Weibo account under the name Blood on the Hands, which he later changed to Snow in the Hands after the name was denied. Snow has the same pronunciation as blood in Chinese, to remind himself of the pain of losing his father. For more than three months, he has been speaking out through Weibo, WeChat, and the media, raising funds in public to set up a memorial for the victims and calling the mayor of Wuhan through the hotline. However, what he got in return was endless police harassment, along with comprehensive monitoring and surveillance. Mr. LV, a Wuhan citizen, said the prospect is very bleak in China for the families of the deceased to pursue accountability with the CCP. Mr. LV commented, Because we have seen too many similar cases, as a victim, not only a victim of the epidemic, but also a victim of other types of government persecution, he goes to a lawyer or makes a petition. For our society, which is not a society that upholds the rule of law, if he goes to the government for any lawsuit, the chance of him winning is very small, so small that it can be negligible. Mr. LV also said that if you go to the government to defend your rights, they'll go to great lengths to block all your paths. Mr. LV continued, It doesn't matter whether you go for a sit-in or a protest right in front of the government. Over the years, in fact, the most powerful thing the government has done is to ensure social stability and to cover up its crimes. This is what they have always done. My friend said at our gathering that the government is not really solving problems, it is covering them up. Mr. Louis said that when the virus broke out, the government should have released public information about the virus. Instead, it kept everything hidden causing massive losses and the vicious spread of the virus. Yet it has not been apologetic. Just like the Cultural Revolution, it did not repent even after such a big event, and no one dared to bring up compensation. Not to mention the fact that now during the epidemic, the government is just shifting the blame and stirring the pot. So it is absolutely impossible for the government to compensate you. And if it were to compensate you, it would be indirectly admitting the matter was of its own making. To shift the blame, the CCP has also banned the gathering of families. Zhang Hai witnessed a WeChat group of 100 family members being blocked, and police showing up at the group owner's door for admonishment. It is also difficult for the WeChat group of family members of the deceased he is currently in to discuss strategies on defending their rights. The police have threatened to arrest them if the defending group calls for more than five people, they will face arrest. Liu Pai Yun, who had a similar experience to Zhang Hai, buried his father's ashes in late March in the company of local government officials. In an online discussion of the epidemic and an interview with a foreign media, he said that local officials followed him every step of the way to collect the ashes. As a result, he was put under full surveillance, and the police even came to his door and threatened him with his 11-year-old daughter's education and livelihood. He said in an interview on April 9th, I will do no more talking for a month. 
I won't be able to keep up my fight if I get arrested. He is fully aware that suing the government could make him disappear. On how to effectively advocate for his rights, he said the government's earlier concealment of information would be the most critical breakthrough that it is ironclad evidence. He already had his plan for the next step in mind. Chen Jiangong, a lawyer currently in New York, joined other attorneys and pro bono individuals in early March to form an attorney counsel team to help families with their claims of compensation. But the situation is very difficult at the moment. Former human rights lawyer Chen Jiangong said, The information I've been receiving does make me very pessimistic as a lawyer. For now, it can only be a stage to make initial contact with the victims. And even at that stage of contact, the stresses that these people are under are enormous. It's very saddening. Not only are their families destroyed, treated unfairly by the government, but they are now facing secondary harm. Sheng Xue, a Chinese-Canadian writer, said that in China, suing the government cannot be resolved at the level of defending human rights. It must be raised to a higher level. We can see from the entire situation of the CCP virus that, from its occurrence, the development to its current situation, there is a very clear clue, i.e., the CCP caused the pandemic, and it went to great lengths to cover it up, distort it, and to destroy the evidence. This has caused so many deaths in the process. So you go and find an executioner to help you defend yourself, which is really not going to work. Sheng Xue also warned that in order to seek justice, one should not use the means of defending one's rights but rather stand up and overthrow the totalitarian rule of the Chinese Communist Party. And only in this way can the problem be truly solved.